Right, have we got, I've got a drink, hopefully. Got it. Right, okay. I've got to do that. Mmm. Wednesday day old cheese, you've got to have a nice, nice sharp knife. I've got to be honest with you. <clears throat> Thing is now streaming live on YouTube. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Happy New Year, everyone. If I haven't said it already. Yeah, well. Well. Related, will it be any better than the previous year? One us? Uh -huh. One more. Yeah, yeah. Can't be really hope. Anyway, mm -hmm. but Boris is on his way out. That's some good news, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. you won't get out of this one. Well, we <laughs> need to get rid of Drakeford first. We're not supposed to be talking about politics. What about Chichester? Do you fix up that car? Yeah, Steve has just joined us. We've got a full trip. We've got a full class. So, what about um, Chichester? We meet you at the pub. Hang on, hang on, hang on a million. For God's sake, you're like a bunch of children. Right, okay. Yeah, well, um, what are you bloody doing there? Yeah. Right, okay. Now, now, calm down. Calm down, my little boy. It's okay. It's fine. All right? So, um, yeah, Chichester, everybody's meeting at... Um, at the accommodation at Chichester, right? And then everybody will be going visiting things. What time-ish? Um, I think it's going to be perfectly reasonable um, to say uh, 2 p.m. That, that sounds good. Yep. Go along good. with that. Yeah. Thank you. 2, 2 p.m. is a nice time. Yeah. Um, and it sort of, if you get, if every, any, everyone gets there really, it's a nice time to have had something to eat. Um, and whatever, it's the south coast. Um, Chichester, it, it, it's, it, it, it sounds like it's going to be a blast anyway. Can I just make a, a little announcement uh, whilst, whilst you guys are here? And remember, this is a, this is a male-only class. Um, and we've got Stephen, Roger, Richard, Bill, Peter and me tonight, so that's brilliant. I just want to mention that um, October, the October excursion uh, will be a joint excursion between Jessica and me. Um, people are going to be staying in Machankleth, Um and I will be take I will be um, taking you around places like Tally Abbey in October. Um, so so that that's going to be the excursion for um, October. I thought I'd mention that. Hang, hang on, hang on, Carl. Tally Abbey is a good distance south from Machankleth. Yeah. A good distance. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I know that. Okay. That's going to be on the way, my friend. Oh, okay. Please beat your heart. Oh, right. Okay. And express the love that we've got for Central okay. and Mid Wales. All right. I jumped again. I'll probably be away in October. Can't do it. Oh, for God's sake. I don't really care, all right? Oh, you do, but I can't do it. Oh, I do. I may as well change. What do you mean you can't be away all October? We'll do it so you can go so I can get the money out of you. That's good. Well, i got to have my bits of rest at my age. <laughs> oh, for, look, look, look. Are we ready to start, boys? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Well, we've got to be very serious, right? It's it's 6.07. Oh, yeah. I would like to mention that today, uh, because we ran over last week, um, we're going to be looking at Mid Howe. Um, we're also going to be looking a little bit at the Broch of Gurnus, which is opposite uh, the Broch at Mid Howe. We'll obviously let you know where everything is. Um, I've got a little map up here as well. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Broch at Musa as well. All of these sites I've visited, so it's brilliant. So I've got first-hand knowledge. I would like us to look at Woodhenge again, yeah, uh, with, with, as, as we sort of progress to understand how the relationship with space is. And, the, and next week, I wanted to mention that we're going to look at how um, space works in regards to an ancient pyramid um, in Egypt. Uh, so we're I did, not sure which of the three great pyramids I'll be looking at, but I've got to work that one out. And we'll be looking at how space and a relationship worked with movement of people in regards to the temple at Knossos on Crete. So that's going to be that's what we're going to be looking at next week. However, right, I've got to uh, something was bugging me. There you go. However, what I would like to do now is show you a video of me sh chasing the goats across the field today, right? Oh. Yes. Oh. Uh, and it's, it's, it's an observation I made, and, and this is to do with the roundhouse that I'm building, yeah? So I'm going to get straight into this video, 
and and it's it's a one minute long video and also i've got a photograph of a post that i put up um that's to do with a another structure that's going mm -hmm. up here as well we, we we got we got three we got three circular structures going up here there's there's there's, there's a roundhouse there's a summer house and there's actually a wood henge that we're building right and um you know, we're building a, a wood henge. Yes, not many new wood henges in Wales. We're building a new wood henge. So what I, I'm going to just get straight on to where I want to be, because I am aware that we're probably going to run out of time. So um, let's just, it, it don't matter. It, the girls won't mind. Uh, I'm just going well, to hope, hopefully <coughs> we've got, uh, we've got this. We've got this and we've got that. Okay, I'm hopefully going to be, um, hang on a minute, it's not, my, okay, it's not let me do something a minute. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go directly um, into uh, my images. Um, it's things that are slightly a bit more difficult when you're using an iPhone, even though I had it all set up already. Oh, yeah, it is all set up. I looked, I pressed the wrong button. What a numpty. Um, and we got, we got that there. And we've got that there. Hang on, stop. I don't want to be chasing the goats yet. So here we go. Um, let's just um, show you where I am. And uh, let's get to there. And uh, let's uh, share the screen. Roger's already fallen asleep. Sorry, Rod. Uh, oh. There we go. And uh, start broadcasting. It's all, it's all happening now. Good. Happy days. Um, and what I need to do now is hopefully... Uh, we will be able. Excellent. So, what? One thing I one thing I observed the other day. Right, I, I was I was in the field, and I was um, I, I I was shouting and screaming at the goats because they probably um, nicked one of my tools or something, um, and they're little conspiring little creatures, and I chased them over towards the roundhouse, and they wouldn't go through it. Right, the, the 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 posts from the roundhouse are up, and they just wouldn't go through it. They had to go around it. And I'm just thinking, well, why don't you just go through the middle of it, right? And you'll you'll see what I mean now. So, what what we've got, well, I, I'm I've got the grass here. This is a very important thing now. Animals seem to observe the same rules as humans. Um, so there, there's there's my two goats, right? And what I'm the, the roundhouse is behind, so I'm chasing one, and you see it goes around the roundhouse. So I'm thinking, well, that's a bit strange. Why didn't he just go into the middle of the roundhouse be between the posts? Because there's nothing. But I'm two chasing at both goats now, right? Here we go. I'm chasing them around. Here we go, chasing them back through. Right, the, the roundhouse is in front of them. They, they, there we go, and they go around it. So that's the second time. So I'm thinking, right, I've cornered the goats now. I'm on the other side and, 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 and I'm hoping now I can chase them through the roundhouse. If, if you look at the roundhouse, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing between the posts. They won't go through it. And, and I, I thought, I thought this was, this was very, very, very odd indeed. Right, because you can see that, that you've got the, the upright post and there's nothing. There's there's nothing them stopping them going through. They will not go in the middle of that roundhouse, even if I chase them in there. Tomorrow I'm gonna to put a load of food in there and see if they eat it. Right. So the whole point of this is is talking about the relationship of space. Yeah, on and how structures physically stop you um moving. Um, so you can have a post and there's a space and there's a post, but because there's two posts, you won't actually go through the, the space in the middle, even though there's nothing, no barrier stopping you. Right. And this is a really, really key, key aspect to understanding our prehistoric ancestors is a very, very key aspect. And this is, this is going to develop over the next few weeks and the next few months as, as, as the roundhouse is built and then hopefully You'll be with us in the summer doing this this class on a Wednesday, and we we will we will show you how the the round the the the, the um um 
the wood hinge is 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 being constructed. The the, the wood the wooden circle, and, and see how how all that works and how the sense of space is. Now we've already discussed that if you sat in the middle of this roundhouse, what that feels like. You're enclosed by the posts, even though there's spaces between the posts. And if we if we move on and we go, hang on, I got to. We don't want to do these silly goats again, right? Here we go. Right now. What I've started there is I, I've started building a summer house, right? And, and you've got you've got the pond behind us. And the whole point of the summer house is it's gonna have a it's gonna roof, it's gonna have a roof on it and it's gonna be open to the elements, right? And it's a summer house, it's a summer house. You, you, you've got views all the way around you, right? But even still, um, because it's gonna be a circle with a roof on it there's going to be a sense of space with inside, right? We're creating a sense of space inside. All, all this idea of space and how space works is what we're essentially doing, right? So what I want to do, I want us now to go on to mid-how. I'm very wary of time. Um, and totem poles, that, that's at the end of what we're doing today, right? So la last week, what, what we basically... Um, mentioned was this site it's a site known as mid how and and when when i when i started looking at this we we basically had to finish last week and i said we'll come back to this this week brocks are very very interesting structures and brocks are very very interesting structures because they once looked like this now this is the this is the this is 13 meters in height now and it probably was up to 14 and a half well actually it's about 13 and a half meters when you actually go to the top and one thing about this it's it's a very very strange thing indeed and when you go to the top of the broch of musa if you look on the left and on the right between the two um, the two walls, basically it's um, an external wall. Uh, it, it's it's um, it's tied with the internal wall. So there's an external and an internal wall, and it's tied together like a cavity, but it's a very wide cavity that you can actually navigate all the way to the top. And there you see the word stairs. It's it's a stairs going all the way to the top. And there's light that shows from inside the this tower into the stairwell. Very, very strange is that when you get to the top, when you get to those, when you get to the top there, um, that sort of um um th th that that sort of in between the two walls. You've got that tie, that stone tie. That's that's basically the ledge that you walk on, um, and 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 all it is is just a very thin stone. And you can look down, and you can look down, and you can look down, and it's very very scary. Uh, when I say very very scary, it's a concept that I don't, I, I can't really understand when we're looking at the broch. Uh, and if you if you actually move away from that image, and we go back, there was a nice little one. Now, did brochs look like this? Okay. Did they actually look like that? Is this, is this how the broch of uh, Midhau used to look? Is this how the broch of Gurnes used to look? Is this how the broch of Musa used to look? In fact, there are hundreds and hundreds of brochs out there. Um, but the one at Musa is, the, is a very, very uh, well-preserved example. Now... Me and me and Bill have been um, exposed to two experts who know their brooks. Um, there's um, Julie Gibson. Um, she's the county archaeologist for Orkney, and Martin Carruthers, who is a senior lecturer at the University of Highlands and Islands, um, based at Orkney. Now, both of them have two separate theories. One has the theory um, Julie Gibson. Um, has this sort of theory that these were habitational buildings, right? Um, uh, the likes of Martin Carruthers believes it was like a community building, like a community hall. 
But and there's other people who believe that they were actually open to the elements um, and not like this at all. So, you know, it, 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 they're very difficult to actually understand these structures because we, we don't actually have a complete one with a roof on it anymore. But if you if you think of the way um, a, um, a, um, a tower house developed. Now, I know some of you did tower houses with me about a year and a half to um, um, and not two years ago, a year and a half ago, we, we looked at tower houses where there were square tower houses, right? It happens to be that the predominant shape of these, these buildings are actually circular. Um, and the reason why, I, I, I'm just going to chuck it in there, right? And Bill, I, you might disagree because I know you have, you're an engineer, but the fact of the matter is, I believe the easiest um, structure to build is a circular structure. A structure um, that can have um, great strength is a circular structure. That's what I believe, right? It's not necessarily the overall rule, but when we're building in stone, and principally dry stone buildings. Um, this is what these blocks are. They're, they're principally dry stone buildings and they may have been rendered on the inside, but they're unlikely to be rendered on the outside. That's another issue, right? Because this idea of rendering and protecting the external wall um, is is faulted by the fact of the extreme weather. And if you try and render these buildings, the extreme weather is gonna wash all that render off. But then again, um, if you use the right mix and clays and the, the blue um, marine clay, you, you might be able to have a good enough mix, blah, 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 let's just get off that one. That's not what I wanted to do. We're not, we're not supposed to be looking at how structures uh, work. So I think, I think what we need to do is, I've got a little bit of blurb and I, I and I'm just going to read that out. We're going to go off the images. I've got a bit of a blurb. And one other, one other thing about um, Midhelbruch um, is that um, this is this is actually um, hang on a minute. This is actually the the one at uh, Gurnes, right? So it's very similar to Midhel. It says actually Midhelbruch, but it's not. This is the one at Gurnes, which is opposite, right? Um, and basically, um, we'll keep keep that one there. Let's make sure we got that. Um, and this is actually um, Midhau Brock. They go, one of the goodness we've just seen, and this is Midhau. Um, but what, I, what I'd like to do, um, the next bit's a bit bitty. This, I should have shown you this image before we um, started. Um, and what, what we've got is um, to give you an idea of where we are, um, we've got um, Rusa there, the island of Rusa. And, and just there, um, just above Evie, is actually um, the Bruch of Gurnes. So you've got um, Rossi and you've got um, just sort of between that little island thing there and the mainland, you've got uh, the, the uh, Midhau uh, and you've got Evie where you've got the Bruch of Gurnes. Yep, so you get an idea of where these are in relation to the island of Orkney. Now, um, and then if we go over, um, and unfortunately my accent's changed. Um, um, basically, um, I've got to try and, ah, yes, 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 I think that, I think right. Um, so you, you've got that there, that island there opposite Sandwick is Mercer. So this is, on, on this sort of landscape here, um, you get an idea of, of where we are with these buildings. But when, when we think, uh, again, San, Sandwich there and that island there, that's Musur, and, and then you go down, uh, that's Shetland there, and then you go down, and this is our our beloved, beloved um, Orkney. And, um, and we, we've... We've... Um, we thought about um, another Orkney trip, but it would be very different, and that that's projected for the future. And um, and uh, we we're, we're not going to be doing anything this year. 
Um, as Bill said, we hope we're going to have a better year, but that will be for next year. So that gives you an idea of these sites. And 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 um, when we think about Brox, I didn't want to give a talk per se about Brox. They, they spread all the way sort of north of Inverness uh, into um, the sort of distant sort of highlands there, all the way into Orkney and over to Shetland. So that gives you an idea of our uh, Brox. So what I'd like to do now is I'm going to sort of um, cut the share in a minute and I just want to read a couple of notes um, and that's what we're going to do. So if I can just sh shut that down a minute so I could just go to my notes and okay that's good that's brilliant. So I just wanted to give you a, a little bit of history about Midhow itself. So the the buildings the, the buildings, these, these stone buildings, the, these rocks themselves, date to as, as old as around uh, 2,500 years ago. So we're well in the Iron Age, but we do find them being constructed over um, Scotland and mainland Orkney and its island and over to Shetland. So they're a vernacular building style in the north, but they're very powerful um, there's a very powerful signal uh, that these blocks are actually given because this is not the technology um, that buildings were being constructed um, in regards to the south because when we think about buildings of, of, of five meters in height in the south that would be quite a structure right made out of timber yeah, um, um, a building that towered 15 meters above you in the south would be basically unheard of, unless you want to argue with me and say Silbury Hill and Marlborough Mound and a few other things. But what I'm talking about is, is habitable structures. So we don't get anything like this um, in the rest of Britain. Uh, it, it, it's when th there's this argument at this minute um that is being banded around and it, it, i don't know i don't know exactly know what it is but there's there's lots of people um come into people who like me who write books on the roman era and saying oh you know uh, the romans um you say that the romans told us taught us this and the romans taught us that and all the rest of it and i basically say no it was like a um it was like a cross match of cultures but one thing is is that the likes of building blocks in Scotland is, is very, very unique. Um, and, and how the relationship space works and how what they were for and their meaning, we've already mentioned that there's, there's a great academic debate um, in regards to uh, the, the meaning of these blocks. Now, the one I admit how is, by point of fact, only probably about the area around it, we've lost at least a third of the area around it. So if you want to get an idea of what the Broch of Mirhal used to look like and how it, the, the relationship with the other buildings went, you've got to go to the Broch of Gurness, which, we, which we'll quickly look at today as well. And we, we and in lots of these, lots of these Brochs are not on their own within the landscape. They're, they're usually associated with, with other structures. For example, with Midhow, you've got the amazing Midhow Carn, which is nearby. But what we do find is that the Brock Tower itself at, um, at, at the, you know, internally, the internal diameter is nine meters, which, which is quite a big area, actually, an open area. But as we will see with lots of brooks, the internal area was late divided. So one in, one thing I need to say now is 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 a key point to everything that I that I've been saying recently. When you look at a brook, the original meaning, the original focus, and why the brook is there is very different five hundred years later, right? Because they divide the brook, they they. I think Julie Gibson, I mean, a bit, she was very into the fact that, you know, we, we've got these blocks that was an open area thing, which Martin Carruthers would look at with his excavation of the cards. But when, when we look at the 
the excavations with Julie Gib um, was Julie Gibson referring to back in the 1930s. Um, you're talking about division. They start to divide up rocks into sort of cells and internally and, and things change. Yeah. So uh, so it, it's like everything. When we look at something like Stonehenge, the original meaning of what Stonehenge was about has obviously changed a thousand years later. The meaning of what uh, the uh, the wooden monument at um, Woodhenge is about obviously had altered in what it meant initially into the future. Um, and it, it's like everything really. When uh, Peter's been with me, when uh, I think it may have been Peter saying, oh, what, you know, why have we got sort of um, people leaving um, garlands and different things um, in the hedges at this site? What, what's all this about? And uh, basically, um, and, and you've got this sort of, um, association with these sites with 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 the druids and i'm going to chuck in there um kelp to have some meaning for once um uh, but lots of these sites when you when you think about all those words like celts and druids and all the rest of it that's nothing to do with the stone circles in the likes of cornwall because the stone circles in cornwall were being constructed um um uh, maybe two thousand, uh, no, not maybe two thousand years before the idea of Celts and Druids were ever banded around by anyone, anyway. So, so these stone circles have a very different meaning and a function, like all these monuments, initially as they go through history. And also, the other thing that we we need to look at is is the principle of those sites that we call burial chambers. We know them as chambers and the fo focus and attention being used as burial chambers as obviously what we see as the last um, inception and conception of these sites. So when we've got the, like this big open area at these blocks, obviously when you partition them, the buildings get a little bit crowded. Um, and you know, interestingly enough, one thing that we, we do know is lots of these rocks uh, are associated with their own water sources. Um, in particularly, when we look at the one at Mithau, it's got its own spring-fed water tank. So it's got its own sort of, you know, there's hearts and various other things, and you could think about people being very comfortable and so on. But very comfortable as the creeks uh, of the walls, as the pressure of the stone above would split the rock and um, things would sort of move around. Lots of these blocks themselves, because in, in particularly the one at um, Midhau uh, was prone to subsidence. So we've got a sense of Midhau being rebuilt over time. And again, when you rebuild something, again, it's, 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 portent, it's portented focus and, and its meaning and what it's for would obviously change over time. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit like, um, I'll give you a good example. Um, something, a town that me and um, Richard go on and talk about a lot, Barry. We, we, we've got a castle there, Barry Castle. And eventually Barry Castle fell into ruin and it became the home of a local family years and years later after the castle fell into ruins. So they, they're not no longer using it as a castle, they're using it as a, a dwelling. And it's the same, another context there, uh, in meaning and change and alteration and, and the meaning of movement and all the rest of these buildings. When we look at, for example, Land Blethian Castle and the Vera Morgan St. Quintus Castle at Cowbridge, that again moved from being the function of a castle into being a prison, which you could say is the same thing, but it's not. So um, when, when we, the, the, the other key thing about, um, which I, I was I was looking at last week is the fact that the relationship with the brock itself with the other buildings around the, 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 these brocks themselves are never to be surrounded by the remains of other lesser buildings even the brocha Musa, even though the the prime focus of the brocha Musa in Shetland was the brook the the other uh, there is a massive focus with lesser buildings which we'll see from the plans associated with Brocha Gurnes 
on Mainland Orkney and the Brock at um, Rossi. So uh, the other buildings seem to have been um, have a have an array of um, have an array of a focus. Um, what 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 we've got we've got uh, another site nearby where they where they were excavating and um, um, oh god, it's it's on the beach near at Midhow. Um, and there's another there's another broch nearby, and there, there's a little village there, and that was associated with the site. And what we we do see, um, um, I think it's uh, oh god, uh, they, they've been anyway. We'll we'll come to that one again. But but with lots of these sites, um, for example at Midhow, um, they they've got these other little domestic dwellings. Uh, people lived in them. People kept animals. Um, People use them as workshops. Basically, you've got the tower and its ancillary buildings. People and try to understand these brochs by looking at what the village around it means. So, uh, say for example, like, let let me try and get that into context. Let me get that trying to get that into perspective. Uh, people look at a broch and they say this broch itself is is for habitation. And then, the, then they think this is this is all there was, and then they start excavating around, and they think, "Oh, Christ, there's a village." So, uh, what does the village mean? So, uh, that means that people weren't living in a brock; they're obviously living in a village, and the brock must have been used for something else. So, inevitably, as archaeologists excavate and understand a landscape, the 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 meanings of what they have come to excavate have changed, right? This is very, very important. It, it's like it's like thinking, well, um, we we've got a church, and there's no burials associated with the church, and you think, oh, well, that, that's a bit odd. And then you excavate over the road, and there is burials associated with the church because they bury people over there. So uh, it, it's it's trying to when you look at archaeology, and this is another inter another key point, the understanding of the archaeology has changed as archaeologists further understand the landscape, right? And it's called not being focused on the, uh, the a structure, but being focused on landscape archaeology, as Ingold would look at tarscape and landscape, as we've mentioned in previous classes. And it's also very fitting when we when we mention, for example, the pyramids for next week. I I, 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 it's like we, we look at the pyramid in at um, Giza and other places in Egypt. And for a very, very long time, people used to think that the pyramids were actually built by slave labor and they were convinced by it. And then, but people started then excavating further around and actually started finding villages of people that worked on the pyramids. And you could understand they would be looked after. And they, they had a decent diet. And then suddenly overnight, you know that the pyramids were built using slave labor. So the, the interpretation of things changed by the more knowledge that we build up as archaeologists by, by, by looking at a wider landscape and how people negotiate buildings and uh, what their relationship is with buildings helps us understand the structures a lot more. That's, that's why we... Um, that, that's why I wanted to do that earlier on today with with, with the goats. Um, these are, these are uh, goats, um, sub sentient beings. Um, they do have intelligence, but they were they didn't want to go inside the roundhouse, even though they could have. And and I actually watched. I observed them today um, after I'd put up an extra post because I'm actually doing the the outs the outside posts of the roundhouse now, the supporting posts for the uh, for the um, roof timbers um they, they they just wouldn't go in and i just thought i don't get it so so the animals are telling me something that is probably something that i'm trying to put across anyway the boxes themselves lots of these blocks were being excavated in the 1930s so we've lost lots of vital data um uh, that we that we could have if they would have been excavated now uh we would have more dating um, evidence the excavations were covered back then stone bone tools associated with men, how get grain processing, spinning and weaving. Um, but when we when we talk about the excavations, right, it says 
year, the excavations, well, where were, were all these things found? Were the sp was the spinning stuff found in a brock, so a brock, or was it found in the attendant buildings? Where are we going with it? Crucible moulds associated with bronze working. Well, we've already established that with the buildings outside. And interesting enough, uh, this is one thing that I'm going to chuck in there, and, and Bill knows I'm obsessed with this. They actually found um, a Roman bronze vessel within the brock at... Um, mid how obviously the Romans never ever got to uh, um, to the islands of Orkney and a lot of other artifacts at mid how and Gurness, but they never ever got there. Um, when you start to find these types of artifacts, you think, well, what's going on? Is it trade? What what is actually going on with these structures? How are they aware of Roman? How how is Roman aware of them? Anyway, so what I wanted to do now 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 I've done some nice little bit of blue. I would like to go back to um, go back to uh, we've got hang on a minute I've just got to press my little buttons and I don't want that hang on a minute I'm just talking to myself do you know I talk to myself a lot um, and what I'd like to do now let's have a little look at these plans and try to understand these buildings a little bit further so if we um, if we go there and I I uh, barely haven't fallen asleep yet, yeah, which is a good thing. Um, so there you go. The difference is using this technology and not PC is that um, I can't see you all on the same screen, which is a bit of a shame. Um, so here we go. And uh, we've done that. We don't want that. We want to go there. So we've established the entranceway into the Midhau Broch. It's obviously very restricting. So you're going through the entranceway and then you go in, you look from above at this structure and you can see that large chunks of it have been eroded away. Um, and what you can see is the, the, the two skinned wall and you can actually see the divisions within that structure. And you can see there's ditches and all sorts of rock cut things around the outside. And, and the other thing you need to ask yourself is, is um, what, the, what were the ditches and walls about? Why, why, and also, there's, there's, this, there's this other, if you want to look at this, right, let's spoil this whole presentation, that a broch was constructed for defence. And you're thinking, oh, well, I've really spoiled the lecture now. It's the same as talking about religion and, and ceremony. Why does everything in archaeology have to be about religion, ceremony and defence. Um, and my answer is no, it doesn't. Um, there are other reasons why you might build a tower like this. There are other reasons why you might build ditches. There are other reasons why you might build banks. And it's not just my little theories about being uh, defending a site against foxes. Uh, it, it's, it's, about, it's about shelter. Um, it's about comfort. Um, you know, a tower like this might not be just for prestige. Uh, the other thing as well is, this is really, really interesting, right? If you're worried about being attacked all the time, right, why are you going to build a tower which is 15 metres tall, uh, maybe render it on the outside or maybe not render it, but a, a 15 metre tall tower that can be seen basically on a flat landscape in Orkney for miles around. Wouldn't that draw people to your site? Wouldn't it make you vulnerable? People don't think of that. They think, oh, oh what we'll do, we'll, we'll build a tower that's going to take a, a, several years to build, use all our uh, manpower, use all our resources, right? Um, and then hopefully if we're attacked, we can all go inside the brock and, and die happily without any food because we haven't found, found on the landscape. So, so these brocks were probably constructed over a very, very long period of time. And if they were constructed over a very, very long period of time, uh, they, they were not looking at initial defence. And this is this is this is probably one thing that Julie Gibson and Martin Carruthers does, do, don't sign up to. They're, they're, they're not really for defence. They're for other reasons. Um, and I, I would like to say shelter. I'd like to say comfort. And, you know, Bill has been with me on Orkney, um, I think, four times. And um, there are certain times, the first time that we went to Orkney, we went to the um, the chamber at um, Mice How, not Mid How, Mice How. And there was rain. It was actually coming in um, horizontally. 
um it, it, it you know you're thinking it it was very wet and and rain just come at you and a building like this you would be very very sheltered you'd be very very comfortable and when you think about when when you think about how their mindsets worked they, they worked very differently than ours and you're thinking about rock cut ditches what could rock cut ditches do take water away from a site uh, you know all these different things if you if you why do you need these these massive th defenses it, it's it's i i hate this i hate why we're um why why we're so politic in archaeology we're, we're we're thinking male we're thinking uh, we're thinking warfare we're thinking all these things all the time and and you get you get a good female like julie gibson who starts thinking about this is about life this is about living um, I'm not saying Martin Carruthers got uh, got a completely different idea altogether. Martin Carruthers has, it, uh, is sort of into this mindset of um, less defence and more um, for practical reasons. So as we as we sort of as we gel and we we've seen that image now, um, and again this is a reminder of Broch look like and looks like today this is the Broch Musa. Uh, and this is what maybe a standard broch looked like, but this could be any Scottish broch. Um, and I, I'm not going to make the stupid statement. Um, um, Scotland has got um, more brochs than any location um, on the planet. It's the only place that got uh, that has got brochs on the planet. Um, but I've seen that actually written down. There, there, there was a there was an author saying um, in. Now, Orkney and Northern Scotland um, has got more brocks than anywhere else on the planet. And I just thought that's because they're nowhere else. However, what I would like to do is look at this little bit of a plan. So this is what we've got left. Um, and this is really, really interesting. So what, what we've got initially, what we see is the green stuff is where the brock is being constructed. Now, it's rather interesting that we, we've got the, the green the green areas where it's being constructed and you're thinking well the the building wasn't divided up initially there was no sense of division um 2500 years ago uh there's no evidence of the buildings being divided and you know it's such a huge building who were, who are were actually living in there and you start to think you start to maybe think that this building is for everybody. This is, this is like a community thing. This is where Martin Carruthers comes into this. Um, or is this building some kind of community centre? Martin Carruthers coming into this because you don't get uh, Julie Gibson stuff uh, until much later, 500 years into these buildings, that inside they're being divided. And when it when you do in archaeology, it's got you've got the other brown stuff there. There it says period two, the next stage. Well, you know. This is over. This is over five hundred years or so. This is the way things go, and it's a, another period there. And it's got undefined period and changes to the ramparts and the bottom of the ditch and all these wonderful things. Um, spending a lot of time on ditches, spending a lot of time on ramparts. Right. The other thing we must say, if you're spending a lot of time on uh, banks and ditches, right, there might be another. A portent purpose for these things other than defense because a bank in a ditch is a bank in a ditch when you want to defend yourself right why go through so much effort so a lot of a lot of effort has been expelled um, in regards to um, the the broch itself and the relationship it has with the buildings around the outside and and you know we, we there, there was just this idea that um uh, I, I think it was banded around. I think it may have been banded around that you could have you could actually think of of this ditch as being well, you know, is is paved for example as a paved ditch, and you're thinking, well, is this actually come some kind of walkway? It, 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 actually, interesting enough. Let's just chuck this in here. Um, you could think of it as a bit of a sheltered walkway to get into the rest of the site, and you could be protected from the elements. Because the sea isn't massively too far away, even though big chunks of the site has been eroded away by the sea. Um, the sea isn't too far away. So, you know, you're, you're thinking about... And the other thing as well is, we've got to think about ditches and banks and towers and walls like this. Uh, uh, lots of senses of shelter, because lots of the trees that once existed on Orkney and Shetland are no longer with us. So you've got to... You've got to 
bring in for your own defense. As some of you will be unaware, and actually another site that would be interesting to do is, um, is Scara Bray. Uh, but the thing is, the, the unfortunate, the thing is with Scara Bray, we'll be looking at Scara Bray with our, with our main classes on a Tuesday and a Thursday anyway. But obviously the relationship with space and how things work, that'd be very interesting to see. But the reason why I mention Scara Bray now is that Scara Bray was a, was a semi-subterranean village. Uh, it was meant to be semi-subterranean because of the lack of shelter and protection from the elements, not necessarily the sea, which were a lot further away uh, from the likes of Scara Bray back in the past. But the, the point is, when, when, we, when we look at this, um, uh, how things worked, key to these people was shelter and protection and um, from the elements. Uh, and actually, strangely enough, um, uh, lots of the wooden buildings that I've constructed here, uh, I've actually got storm doors on them. I, I've, I've, got, I've got storm doors into my office. So it, it's a door that's um, only a meter in height. So you've got to go up these little stairs and you duck down and you get into a building that's um, I've got a building that I've constructed here that's got four layers of insulation. You've got the external planking. You've got another layer. Um, you've got a, um, a, a waterproof layer. Um, then you've got a lot of insulated material. And then you've got an internal layer. So I'm doing it. I'm, I'm actually doing it here, but I haven't got the problems um, that, that we actually see on, on Shetland and Orkney. But I understand. I understand that one of the most important things as a human being is heat. Heat is more important than defence. And heat is actually, you can, you can touch and scoff, but you will die. Uh, no matter how much food and drink you've got, you will die if you're, you are cold, right? You can have enough food and drink to survive. But if you are cold, you are going to die, particularly in these situations. You can have as many hearths as you, li as you like, but you, you haven't got lots of material to burn. So heat is massively important as human beings. You cannot survive without heat. A good example of that is the Greenland Vikings. Not trying to prove my point, but the proof point is, is as the Greenlander Vikings um, conditions got colder and colder, they barricaded them into the houses and basically starved to death because they just didn't want to go outside because it was so cold. Yeah, so, so, so heating is very important. And I'm putting that forward as being more important than defense. Because if, you, if you're all dead, you've got nothing to defend anyway. It, 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 it plainly makes sense. Not trying to prove a point, but trying to make a point. So what, what we've got, if we, if we look at this, um, if we look at mid how and how mid how works, you go from the outside into the inside. And what, what you find is um, an array of lay levels. So you go into this um, um, internal, um, external area. Then you've got a little bit of a, um, a curb. And then you've got to step back into another area. On either side, you've got two chambers. One, the, cha the chambers can actually take you um, in through the wall into the top part of the building. And then eventually you've got another little bit of a curb there, that grey curb. And then you're into the rest of the structure. Well, initially, what you would have been met with, initially, what you would have been met with is we, if we go, if we if we go with this, that's what that's what you'd have seen. Maybe, maybe, right? That that's maybe what you have seen, because the arrangements that you see at Mid How are actually stone arrangements, actually solid stone arrangements. Right. Oh, and there you are. You've got some um, sheep and cattle living inside the building, keeping everybody warm. This this um, one thing, um, you've got something known as the scarcement level. Right. Uh, and that if, if you look up from the ground floor, there, first floor, you see this little corbel sticking out. Now, you don't see that in all blocks to support levels. And the argument is, is that these these little um, corbels, which is basically ground first floor, those corbels themselves are actually to support a roof level, not beam levels for levels within um, within the structure. So some people argue that uh, 
the, a block didn't look like this at all. And the other thing as well is it would have been basically pitch black in the lower level. So that's the point because there's no windows. There's no light inside these buildings at all. There's absolutely no light. There is no light. So the only light that you've got is artificial light within these buildings. This is why some archaeologists have argued that, um, you know, you might just have a ground floor level and you might have a little bit of a roof and that's it because you just can't light them. Or then again, this is a genuine, genuine reconstruction. This is, this is the dichotomy of Brocks and also how Brocks developed over time is also a problem within, within when you're, you're trying to understand the archaeology. You know, it, it's, oh God, it, 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 it's very, it's very, very, um, it's very, very traumatic to try and um, get into the minds of these people. Maybe actually everybody's right, because if you're thinking about these structures being used for 500 years, 600 years, or a thousand years, may I be shut down, shot down with lightning. In fact, every single reconstruction that you see is correct. And the other problem is when you're thinking about reconstructing archaeology, and I'll, 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 um, I'll see if I can get an example of that now. Hang on a minute. Let's just sort of, let's just have a little look. Well, you can see the Brocha Musa here. Um, and if you if you look inside the Brocha Musa, let's have a, let's have a get inside the Brocha Musa now. Um, let's just, um, there we go. Uh, let's see if we can get that there. Uh, there's lots of, lots of Brochs here. All right, there you go. If I can, let me open that one. It's not let me open it. I want, a, I want an image. Right, hang on a minute. Oh, damn, 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 damn. But basically, the images that you can see on the, on the, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's, just, let's just go with uh, another example. Right. Right, okay, this is, um, this is the Dun um, Tel of Abruch. Um, what you can see is you can see on this one, to try and get my point over, you can see a cross-section of a Abruch that's, um, partially collapsed on one side um, it is fairly intact on the other side right now this is this is as we finally see the site now any architectural changes um, are usually by archaeologists taken to try to illustrate how the building looked but the point is just because you've got a corbel in one place doesn't mean a corbel to support a floor just because that uh, just because you've got a corbel in one place doesn't mean to say that corbel was used in the final stage of how the building constructed. The biggest problem in archaeology, we take everything together and we try to make a reconstruction when some features, some architectural features may have been defunct in the far, final sequence um, of what that building was functioning as in its final years. So if we, if we, if we, uh, if we cross that one off there, uh, and again, this this is this is inside our Midhau Broch, and you can see it's very very complicated. Um, when you do see reconstructions of anything like this, it, it is taken to say that uh, you've got two hearths there. Um, is the hearth on the left side for one family, and is the hearth on the right side for another family? Um, why is it the people on the left side had the water tank, and the people on the right side didn't? Or is that word tank? It's meant to represent a water tank for these people. Uh, was it for one family or two families? The, all, all these questions need to be asked, but then again, were all these features available um, when the building was uh, functioning at any point at any stage in the past? It's a bit like, um, I, think, I think the best, best metaphor is is that when you've, for example, um, when, when you've got, say, say for example, you, you're converting a farmhouse, right? And you've got stables outside and you use the stables as a, as a garage for your car. But the original use for the stables was actually for horses or cattle. Um, do we then interpret, interpret in a thousand years time that, you, you, that it was only ever used to store a car? Um, when in fact it was originally used to store cattle. So I, I think we've got to be very, very careful to see how these buildings actually worked in the past. Um, and what was that? And, and, and were there um, parts of this building which were actually um, defunct? For example, 
if we um, if if we think about the internal uh, makings here, and I think we're looking at about four hundred years AD now, so the site's been standing for quite some years. Um, it, are the stairs that evolve between the two walls, the external wall and the internal wall, are the stairs um, still function in the way they used to function for people to get to the uh, top to maybe look out? Or what what were the stair, stairs' original purpose for? So. We, we, again, we, we've got to be very careful on how we reconstruct the past and how we interpret the past. So if we if we move away from that and we go back to this reconstruction, um, it, it's, it's, it's rather interesting. I'd like to think it actually looked like this and maybe to get into the upper levels, that's what the stairs were for. Yeah, um, some people... Some people say, go on, go on, Pete. It's, it's obvious, isn't it? You know, that this, this is what the stairs were for, to access other levels... Um, w within this structure, right? But then again, if you want me to be a bit uh, pedantic and say, well, um, you know, those minarets, those towers associated with um, uh, with mosques or or associated with Christian places of worship, the the reason the reason why the towers there is that you can actually get to the roof and you can get closer to God, right? And you can call uh, everybody to prayer. It's not actually to get into other levels of the building that. That, that, that you've got there it's actually for a set purpose is to actually get higher and the point of getting higher is to do whatever you need to do not to actually get into other levels of the structure so i, I like to think that again that there's ne never any one way of looking at the past when we think about uh, again the work of tim ingold tim ingold would would argue uh that um our our landscape is is very very complex. Um, it's like a human being, for example. Um, let's let's just look at the human body. For example, I know people who've got tattoos who uh, who might who might say not on a tattoo. Um, I love Deborah, um, and they get into a new relationship, and you take your clothes off, and a woman says, oh, "Why have you got a tattoo saying um, you love Deborah when I'm I'm Claire?" And they say, oh, well, that's defunct now. I, I don't really need that tattoo, but I can't get rid of it, right? And the point is, the metaphor is, is, is that's the same metaphor. Not necessarily everything in archaeology functions at the same time, and it certainly doesn't. Um, there are rejects, to, rejects in any areas of archaeology in the past. Um, so if we, if we move away from that there, um, and I just want to... This, this is... Um, Again, it might say mid how Broch, but it's not. This is the one that got a nest. This is the one opposite. Um, and what we do have is a very complicated arrangement of a village around the uh, around the Broch at um, Gardenes. Now, one one of the things principally, and if I if I can if I could just get back to it, if I've got oh god, I've, I've lost the images. Um, I just got rid of them. Uh, one, one of the things, one of the things is, is that um, with some blocks, the buildings are, are attached to it. You know, they're, they're 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 directly attached to it. But what what you can see here is when you look at the block of goodness, what you can see is you can walk all, all the way around the block, right? So the block itself shelters your buildings. There's like a little alley around the block, which is really important because when you think about it, the easiest. Let, let's just. Let's just go and um, I, I need to show you uh, the opposite example there. Just, just, just get back to a mid how I mean, I just got, um, I just um, lost the images. Uh, mid mid how broch, and um, there's a point to be made here. Uh, and we go there, and brilliant. I think it's with this one, or it might be with another one. Hang on. Right, okay. Um, what you can see um, is over on the left there, there's structures that are directly attached to the Baroque, which you do not see with the likes of Gurdness. Um, and they're, they're, these buildings are very tight with the Baroque as well. There's very, very little space, right? And in fact, that building there uh, on the uh, bottom um, um, uh, right-hand corner there, that's very close to the Baroque as well. But when you actually go... Uh, when you go to the other example um, and you look at um, and you, you go back to 
go to next, you can actually see that there's a clear space. Um, you can see that there's a clear space developing ar around the, the Gurness example and people um, are using this space to navigate around the Broch. So that's, that's, that's really, really important. There's a definition between the Broch and the rest of the village. Um, I'm just going to let these, I'm just going to try and let everybody else in. Hang on, mate. We'll just, we'll just admit uh, Jess and Anne a minute. So uh, um, otherwise they, they'll, they'll be complaining. Right. So anyway, if we, if we go, if again, I, I think, I think maybe what we could do is come, come and sort of see the relationship of how the village is actually working uh, as you head towards um, the Broch um, at um, Gurness. And the other thing as well is as you're going down the village, the, the thing that you can actually see in front of you is the Broch at all times. The Broch itself dominates the landscape. You enter, you enter the entrance of the village here which you can't actually get a perspective of what you're actually seeing um, in regards to um, the one at the um, Broch of, of um, Mid Howe. And the other thing as well is what you're looking at, the, the other, something strange about the ditch. Here, you've got the ditch on the south side, but on the north side, the north and the northeast side, there's buildings in it. So if it's a defensive ditch, all you need to do is go the other way and you can just get into the village. So what is this ditch about? Is it for drainage? Is it, is, it, does it necessarily mean to say um, defence? And, and again, I like to move away from this idea of defence. Again, a very strange way of how there's this sort of relationship with space and how things are navigated. And maybe we could actually come, to, we will come back to the um, mid how broch when we are actually doing the um, prehistoric classes. So one thing I'd like to do now is just two things before we actually close. And um, for Jessica and Anne, um, can you um, try and get hold of Pat to see where she is tonight? And um, whilst, whilst I carry on. Um, and I'd just like to mention, I, I've mentioned um, Woodhenge a few times. Um, this gives you an idea of scale. Now, if you go into, if you go on the outside, uh, the entranceway, uh, and you look directly, um, you look directly into where the middle is, with all these posts standing in the air, these posts would actually block the view, right? And when we look at the 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 henge, the the, the bank around Woodhenge. Um, it's no longer there. The ditch is filled in with the soil. Uh, the, uh, the, the ditch is filled in uh, with the soil from the bank. Um, but <coughs> the amazing thing is, is as you're look, starting to look, as you're starting to look, um, the, you've, got, you've got one circle there on the outside, another one there, another one there. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six circles of posts. And each of these circles is meant to obscure your view of what's going on into the in the middle, um, and the, these would be quite um, dominating these posts. Um, and it's it's given you a maze, a sort of labyrinth impression to try and get to the centre. Again, we will be looking at how these wood hinges and stone hinges work again over the next few weeks. But we are definitely looking at the um the pyramids next week uh, one of the pyramids and we're going to be looking at the relationship of space and movement at um the colossus uh, the nossa site on crete and one last image as well uh when you go to when you go to places like canada and uh, canada's got quite a number of respectful totem sites and when you go to other parts of um uh, the united states as well Totems are very, very important. They're posts. They dominate the landscape. Again, that sense of a post. Um, you know, having a post dominate a landscape and, and you know, when, when, you're, when you're in the middle of nowhere um, and it's an open field and you've got a post, people migrate to that post. Um, when you've got a big, when you're in a field and there's a standing stone, people migrate to the standing stone why do they do that what 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 is the importance of of this single thing standing in the field what does it mean 
Do you touch it? Do you go around it? Do you look at it? Do you avoid it? Um, but nevertheless, everything that we create um, has a bearing on our understanding of the landscape. So we're going we're gonna to end that there. And I'm going to ask if there's any questions. And um, don't forget what we're going to be doing next week. So that, that's great. And, and thanks, everybody, for, for, for joining uh, this tonight. So I'm going to stop my screen sharing now. And let's go to, let's admit, uh, Pat. Oh, God, it's just like old times. Um, and there we go. Stop sharing. Right. OK. Um, is there anything, um, Bill, is there anything you'd like to say tonight? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I've been to the uh, Brocks of Midhow and Gurnas with you, Carl, as you know. And they're very similar in design. Both called little villages around them, etc. I've also been to the Broch of Carloway on the Isles of Lewis. Oh, where, where Midhow differs on the floor plan on which may, su may support the idea of uh, habitation rather than community use is that um, the Midhouse is partitioned, it's bisected, as you pointed out on the plan, is bisected across the floor area with slabs uh, about two or three inches thick, seven or eight foot high. On end, yeah. Uh, yeah, with a hearth and a tank on both sides, actually, if you look at the plan, okay, which suggests that uh, there were two families possibly living either side. Yeah. And, and, and the basic structure, the vertical structure, would allow easily heat from the two halves to the ground floor to rise and heat the upper levels, which, again, to me, is a clear sign that these were for habitation and that a number of different families lived in them. Uh, the, 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 the point is, however, Bill, is, is that those partitions and the water tanks and the hearths were put in later. They weren't part of the original ground plan. Has that been proved? That has been proved. And um, the, the, the architecture, as, as Julie, Julie said herself, the architecture of um, the architecture of the Iron Age was to um, have stones um, on the on the horizontal rather than the, the the later sort of Pictish building where stones were put on the vertical. Okay, so that suggests, uh, that, that suggests clearly then that the Pictish people moved into them long after they'd been abandoned by the earlier Neolithic people. We, 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 don't necessarily, we don't necessarily need to use the word abandoned, just to change. Change, yeah. Well, but that's so, typical of history, isn't it? You typical use of history. When, when, when you use the word abandoned, um, they may not have been, you may not have been able to reuse them. So may, uh, uh, maybe, maybe the, these people's, the, the, these, the, the, the ideas of the people's using these buildings may have changed as well um, mm. and what they were used for. So obviously you, you've just pointed it out yourself. So they were used for family usage, um, starting on the use for family usage later, but initially they may have been uh, in the eyes of Martin so that they're actually used for, for, for a community. Um, but but the other thing as well is the other thing that stands out to me, Bill, is a lot of efforts being used in constructing these buildings. But it also makes you very very vulnerable. If 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 you're constantly being attacked by who whales, um, do you know what I mean? Um, it, it's like the, the the point is it's just it's just showing within that landscape, and you're making yourself vulnerable by creating it. Um, and you've got all those sort of uh, dia uh, dichotomies when you're trying to understand and interpret these yeah, sites. But, but that in itself suggests that they were built during times of peace, when there was yes. no threat, and it took months and months, even years, to build these structures. Exactly. So distance, yeah. Exactly. When yeah. you exactly that's the point. You're building these type of types of mega structures when you've got times of peace. Exactly the same when you look at the ancient pyramids. Yeah. They were able to build these ancient pyramids when when they had a workforce to build them. You can't build ancient, you can't build pyramids that are absolutely colossal if you're fighting countries all the time. It don't happen. Sure. It, it's a bit like, um, OK, let's look at the Second World War. The Germans did not build any autobahns after 1939. And the reason why they didn't build any autobahns after 1939 is all their available labour was in the army. Um, road building after 1939 in Germany stopped and there's whole lengths of roads that were never constructed. So that is a very, that is actually a key point, Bill. That's it. OK, I'll stop there, Carl. Thank you. I think I, I think otherwise we're going all night. Um, um, anyway, thanks for joining us, Bill. I'm hopefully seeing you next week. Uh, Richard. Oh, really interesting, Carl. 
I know you would say that. That five rate gave you earlier on, Richard. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. Um, what am about I you? Am I supposed to be joining you? You are. Right? Hang on, we're doing our questions. Shh. Sorry. Right. Um, Stephen, <laughs> anything you'd like to ask, Steve? Nothing. Nothing. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Anyway, good of good of you to join us, Steve, and uh, hopefully see you next week as well. Oh, absolutely. Um, and uh, yeah, Stephen, you, you've always got things to say, but you haven't got anything to say this week. I'm, I'm a bit perturbed by that. I've got to go ahead and think about it first. All right, good <laughs> for next week. What about you, Rog? Thanks for that, Stephen. Roger. I think Roger. Obviously, got... the the. Uh... Rocks and had a very similar idea to the normal constructs of towers originally, then the, the sort of area around it uh, yeah. could have been the bottom bailey and the village, like the Romans and their vicars. All the same sort of thinking ditches to do whatever, it might have been different things, really, but the same thing in the rocks. To me, it's, uh, it's like the Normans, the ground floor was not used, they lived above it all and that is some sort of defence. Uh, possibly a security against wild animals in some way, depending on what was around. I wouldn't have thought it would be too much apart from bulls or something that could cause problems, especially yeah. on their own animals, so they need to keep them out of the way of wild animals as well as yeah. a defence against attack. The tower itself you need to look across the land to see if there's anything approaching that might cause problems. I can see why you'd be at the top of the tower. But surprisingly, I was split just like the Norman towers later on and stuff. Right. Um, you finished there, Rog? Yeah. <laughs> right, I think, I. well, actually, I'm going to I'm gonna completely, I, I, I put across that I'm, I'm not too keen on that. Um, but I think uh, Bill, Bill, Bill's point over the fact that these, these no, no, these Norman and Roman sites were constructed when there, there, there were times of trouble, right? But even when you've got Roman fortresses being built, built like at Isca, um, they, they weren't being attacked. So they were able to build this massive fortress at Isca. They didn't um, uh, manage to complete the Roman fortress at Ixchatil, um, um north of um, Edinburgh and Glasgow because they were constantly under attack, right? So you're going to build something like this when you're not being attacked. And the other thing as well is um, the the idea that um, heat is, is more important um, than the idea of defence. And uh, if you're trying to keep yourself uh, intact and away from the winds and living and still functioning as a community, these towers come in very importantly. And if you think about it, uh, the idea of the silo, these are very silo-like buildings, and you're thinking, well, you know, there, there, there could be something in the shape. And I think there is something in the shape, whether whether you're right or wrong, but there is something definitely in the shape, Roger. Thank you. Thanks for that, Roger. Um, what about last, what, last but not least, totally, is Pete. Well, um, they, they obviously was a most efficient building, a defence against the weather during severe weather conditions through the winter. And it was the most efficient way of living through the through the severe weather conditions. And on the the one where you showed us the ditch, and where the ditch only went part way around, if you looked on the other side, it was the seashore. Um, that that's a very good point, Peter. However, however, a uh, very good point. I, I was I was I was looking at that one when when we mentioned it, but the the sea has. Um, the, the sea has um, ingressed onto the site, so the sea has advanced into the site. Oh, yes, but there may well have been a ditch around there, which has been overcome by the sea. We, we don't know, Pete. We don't no. know. But we don't know. But oh, um, no. we don't know. I, but good point. I, I, can, I can take that. I can take, always take that. Yes. Um, but, but the one thing, the one thing um, if we want to think about um, a ditch comes into its own in, in the winter months. It's not just for defence. Yes. Um, a ditch would be very useful in, in draining water away from the site. And um, it, it, stand, it, it, it makes sense. It does make sense that a ditch is more than just for... It, it takes water flooding the site and, you know, a site like this with habitation. You know, that, that's where I see the ditch coming into it. So, yeah. And the other thing as well is, Pete, if you had one of these on flat home every time you go out in the winter, you would never want to leave. <laughs> um, 
And on that note, if nobody's got anything else to say, um, I think Richard's staying for this. I, I, I know um, Jessica's taken over now. So, um, guys, next week, you know what we're doing. We're going to be looking at um, Ancient Pyramid next week. We're going to be looking at Temple of Nossos. I really appreciate you joining us this week, um, Stephen, Roger, Richard, Bill, uh, Peter. Um, and if you nobody's got anything else to say, I look forward to seeing you all next week for another jam. Thank you very much. That's good. Okay. Good 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 Bye. 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 Cheers, guys. Yeah. Are you coming tomorrow? Of course. Oh, down to pretend. Yes. Keep keep the coffee hot. Okay. okay. Bye. <laughs> Take care, guys. Bye. 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 Bye bye. Right, I think I think it's over to you, Jess. So, sorry, I've just got into that. We we just had one of those jams. So, Hello, Jess, you know, okay, I got I got to stop my recording and I'll I'll leave it over to you. Anyway, uh, thanks, ladies. Uh, Jess, I know you're going to be back tomorrow. Uh, make sure uh, you don't have too much cake because apparently there's a big cake waiting for you in Lantwit. <laughs> oh bless. Oh. All right. Uh, apparently, They're Jim's made one. You. You. What's that? They're trying to steal her from us. <laughs> oh, no, no, they, they, they've already. Uh, you, you've got a keeper. That's the point. Anyway, guys, <laughs> go, good night. Good night, um, Anne and Jessica and, um, and Pat. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Night night. Good night. Good night. Night night. Night night. Night night. Oh, night night, Richard and Rich. Oh, don't forget, Rich. Oh, you've got a bloke in your class. We haven't got any women in ours. Anyway, see you. Night night. 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 I'll stop the recording and I'll start it when you. What's the title, Jess, anyway? Um, I'm just looking at Kaya Wentz today. All right, then. Okay. Night night, guys. Good night. Oh, oh. See you Friday.